going to be in the book of Luke today, chapter 10. We're going to pick up on verse 38 and read down to verse 42. Book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. I tried to get it out. I got it on the Facebook page, and I, we, we got the start of the bulletins back again. So hopefully everybody's there. I don't hear too many pages ruffling. If you're there, say amen. 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 Let's see what God's Word has to say to us this morning. It says, Now it happened, as they went, that he entered a certain village. And a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her home, her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Now that should be a familiar story to most Christians. Most people are familiar with the story of Mary and Martha, two sisters. They had a brother named Lazarus. We know that Jesus raised him from the dead. That was their brother. But I tell you, even though, what I've noticed, you ever notice siblings? They can be raised in the same house in the same way, but they go about things completely different. Their personalities can be completely different. You're like, how, how does this happen? You know, one's here, one's there, and they just... Their thought process is entirely different. Mary and Martha may have been sisters, but they approach things from a completely different angle many times. We're going to be looking at the story of Mary and Martha. I'm going to try to pull some things out of there that I think sometimes I've missed in the past. But the first thing that I need to do as we talk about this, I don't want anybody to ever uh, uh, misunderstand what I'm getting at here with Mary and Martha during the sermon today. God uses many different type personalities in his kingdom. Sometimes people think, well, yeah, that, that type of personality, this person probably can't hardly, they might be saved, but you know, God's not going to be able to use them hardly. You've got to have this type of person out there. You've got to be able to have this talent. Mm -mm. I'm telling you, God uses many different types of personality and gifts in the kingdom. He could use Mary and Martha both, even though they approach things differently. You know, we, um, the word that comes to mind for me with Mary and Martha is balance. It just didn't, it didn't seem to be a lot of balance in their life there. Something's going on. We're going to touch on that. I don't want to get too much into it yet. Having balance in your life helps you more than you realize. Because I don't know about you, but my life gets out of balance at times. Sometimes I work entirely too much. I just do sometimes. Uh, and my life gets out of balance. See, you can have, your life can be out of balance, but it doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. We think, oh, you know, you must be doing something wrong. Then. Not necessarily. Sometimes you try to be productive and you want to do, or you want to do good things or whatever. But you can take on too much. And I'm going to tell you, when I take on too much, nothing good ever comes from it. Sometimes, you know, we, sometimes we read the scriptures entirely wrong. Sometimes. God's word is 100% truth all the time, but sometimes how we interpret it is wrong. And, and that's where the inaccuracies come in. Inaccuracies come in. Now, I've seen people take this particular <coughs> scripture. Now, I, don't throw anything at me as I'm going through here. I, I'm going somewhere with all this. I'll explain myself at, at a certain point. At times I've seen people use this scripture as a validation to not serve in the kingdom. And I'm going somewhere with this. This was not the intention of Jesus here. Now we see for ourselves what Jesus has to say. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to reinterpret Jesus' word. Jesus says, well, his words say what it is. The scriptures, what we read today, what does it say? Martha was worried and troubled by many things. That's one of the keys here. And also, what did he say? Mary had chosen the good part. She was at the feet of Jesus. I think a lot of the problems come in in this family right here, in this situation that's going on here, is simply because 
Mary was worried and troubled by many things. If Martha hadn't been worried and troubled by many things, maybe a lot of this situation in the family would have never happened. Because I find something interesting. Scripture we just read. Book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 39. I preach it from the New King James here. And she, it says, in the Scripture it says, And she had a sister called Mary, speaking of Martha, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. It says also. That tells me Martha had been at the feet of Jesus too. Sometimes we look at Martha in a negative light. I, I, I don't take what Jesus said to her as a rebuke. I think he was trying to get her refocused on what she needed to, what was come first. First things first. Jesus should always come first. And he was trying to get her in the right direction. I didn't take it as a rebuke, not the way I understood it. Many times we, we, we look at Martha and think, you know, oh, well, she, she was just way out there in the left field. And I think that's because she was worried and troubled by many things. You ever been worried and troubled by many things? No. That's no fun. That's no fun at all to be troubled and worried by many things. What happens when you've been worried and troubled by many things? Nothing good. Not one thing good. When you're worried and troubled by many things, you're going to say things and do things you normally wouldn't do. Worry and, and being troubled are miserable companions. They're miserable. I wish I could just do away with them completely in my life. But somehow, you know, I could have the victory over them, but somehow, here they come again. They come right back, like a boomerang. I can't get rid of them at times. Worry and being troubled in this world. You know, Jesus even said that himself. says, you know, take heart. I'm going to paraphrase here. Take heart, because you will have trouble in this world. Or take heart, but I got it all mixed up here. You will have trouble in this world, but you can take heart, for he is overcome. Some of these scriptures that I was reading, you know what? Amen. As I talk about serving and some different things here in just a moment, I just, I just keep in mind, Jesus should always come first. Amen. Always. Amen. But the thing about it is, there's many different ways to worship Jesus. You can be sitting at the feet of Jesus. But you know, as you go out during the day and you're on your job, or whatever it is that you do during the day, you know you can be worshiping Jesus even then, right? Mm -hmm. You can be in an attitude of prayer as you work. Mm -hmm. And I know sometimes your job may make that difficult. Some jobs, you know, I mean, you're, they're your fellow co-workers or your bosses, Maybe they make it really difficult on you. And it's hard. Because when you're troubled and burdened by many things, your mind is everywhere but on God. You're worried about all the other stuff. Your mind is not on God when you're troubled. When, when, I, uh, when I think about what I need in my life, I think, I'm thinking about balance. <coughs> Now, how do I do both? How do I worship God and serve and do all these things? How do I have that balance? There's a time to be at Jesus' feet and a time to serve. As you're serving, you can still be in an attitude of prayer. When you put Jesus first, everything will work out. Sometimes you're going to have to make some difficult choices. You're going to have to make some changes in your life. I'm at that point in my life. I'm getting ready to make some changes, I do believe. And that's okay. It's all going to work out. God knows what's best. Amen. Always put Jesus first as you serve. Never let anything interfere with your relationship with God. Nothing. Nothing. Because that is the only thing that you're going to take to the other side. All this other stuff, you're not going to take it. And I'm going to tell you, when I don't have peace in my life, when I'm troubled, I don't have that peace that I need. And then you say, well, I'm not sure if I have peace or not. If you don't have any peace, you know it. When you're stressed out and burdened by many things, always put Jesus first. 
You have let your problems overwhelm you. You have let the stress of this world and all its cares and problems overwhelm you. It is too much for you. You cannot handle it. I don't care how strong you are. You cannot handle the problems of this world. That's where Jesus can lay your burdens, cast your burdens upon me, he says. We were never designed to carry those things. But we try to do it. We want to be strong. You ain't that strong. You're not strong as you think you are. You ever been broken? I have. And it ain't a good place to be. I don't care how strong you are. You ain't strong enough to carry all this, the problems of this world. All the burdens, all these things. And I think that's what Martha, I, I, I truly believe that she, she trusted in Jesus. She admitted the feet of Jesus. So she, I, I, scripture says, it says also, so that tells me she had been at the feet of Jesus. She had also, you know, but she, she had lost her focus somewhere along the line. It was no longer any balance. It, it was about everything that was in front of her. She, she couldn't see Jesus anymore. We need to make sure God is first in our life. And at times, in every believer's life, sometimes that doesn't happen. That doesn't mean you're not, you're, uh, you don't trust in Jesus, you don't believe in God anymore. We just don't have the balance sometimes. Our life is just so busy. Sometimes you're going to have to make some changes. I, I, when I was looking at the... Uh, when I was looking at the, uh, the, the scriptures here, I'm going to uh, give you uh, something from the book of John, chapter 12, verse 2. It says something interesting here. From the book of John, chapter 12, verse 2. It says, this is talking about Jesus and uh, um, Mary and Martha here and their brother Lazarus. It says, there they made him, that was Jesus, a supper, and Martha served. But their brother Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with Jesus. I have often wondered... If Mary had already done her part, Scripture doesn't tell us this. Scripture doesn't tell us this. Just things that run through my mind sometimes. I'm always looking at the what is, what could have happened to you? Why, why is this? See, a lot of times we look at a situation and we don't know why it happened. You know, you just, you're addressing the surface issue, not the real issue. See, the Scripture is not meant to contain everything. It, 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 you know, there is no exhaustive account of everything on heaven and earth. A book couldn't exist like that. So some things they tell us what we need to know. But I've often wondered if maybe Mary had already done her part. I don't know. And, you know, we have no way of knowing this. I'm just looking at the wording of it, some of it, how it's described. Maybe Martha's personality was just so much different than Mary's. She wasn't doing it the way she wanted her to do it. So it wasn't acceptable. We don't ever know. We don't know what's going on there. It, you know, sometimes, you know, just because you do something different doesn't mean it's wrong. You know, I've worked for companies. At times, I couldn't do anything wrong. It just seemed like I had the golden touch. I don't know. I'm like, I, I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm just doing my job. I wasn't, you know, doing anything extraordinary. I was just finding favor. But the same thing is, and then sometimes the management changes. And then all of a sudden, you're doing the same job you've always done. You're giving the same effort. You're doing everything. And then all of a sudden, you can't do something right. You can't do anything right. I'm like, what's the matter here? I'm like, what do you mean? I'm not doing anything wrong here. I don't know. Maybe that was the personalities that were going on here. I don't know that. But it just makes me wonder sometimes. Sometimes when we read the scriptures, you know, my mind wanders about many things. And this scripture was never really about a meal at all. Now the meal seems to be a, a focus there, but it was never about the meal. But it was who, who was present at the meal. You see, we make life about a lot of things. And you can do a lot of things in this life. But you've got to have the presence of God there with you. It's never about all the stuff we accomplish and do in this life. It's never about where we go and what we do all the time. 
It's about having God's presence with us. This scripture is not really about a meal. I ask you, how much do you have on your plate right now? Do you have something that's overwhelming you? That's worrying you, stressing you out to no end? And maybe some nights you can't even sleep about some of these problems you're having. They're overwhelming you. If you've never been overwhelmed in this life, I don't know how you're doing it, and I, I really probably don't believe you. <laughs> because we've all, we're human. It just happens sometimes. When I've been overwhelmed, nothing good ever come from it. When you're overwhelmed, what do you do? You take it out on other people that probably had nothing to do with it. I'm like, what's wrong with that guy? You know, I'm like, you know, you're being a grocery store. You know, you're going along, you know, like during NASCAR, you know, like the country only had to get in front of you the cookie aisle or something, you know? Like, What's wrong with this guy? You know, is he crazy or what? It ain't about the cookies. Evidently, he's got something else going on. He's overwhelmed and burdened by many things in this life. We do and say things we normally wouldn't do. You ever done something when you're overwhelmed and your mind is full of all your problems and troubles? Something you've done a thousand times, well, a thousand and one, you end up screwing it up. You say, how did I do that? I know how to do this. Or, you know, something you've done a thousand times, you don't even, you not screw it up. You forget how to do it. You're like, how? wait a minute here. I, I'm like, I, I'm like, I got to stop here. I know I've got too much on my plate. There's too much going on here. This is not what it's supposed to I know how to do it. Just, I look like a fool standing here. That makes it look like I don't, I, I'm a dummy or something. It's all because I was overwhelmed and I was burdened and troubled by many things. And it was overwhelming me. We lash out at people and they let you have it. You know, what's our instinct? I'm going to give it back to them. Mm-hmm. I try not to do that. I just said I try. I didn't say I didn't sometimes. How is it possible that I get my focus back? The only thing that I know of is prayer. You ever notice when you don't have any peace, when you're overwhelmed? You know, it just seems like the, your prayer life is not where it needs to be. When I'm overwhelmed, I'll tell you, I can tell... Because I don't usually have any peace when I'm overwhelmed. Seems like for the last couple months, I've been attacked on many fronts. And I can't say that I've always had a peace about them the last couple months. But I know prayer changes things. Yes. But do you ever notice when your mind is full of your worries and burdens, it's hard to pray? Because your relationship ain't where it needs to be. It doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It doesn't mean any of that. But your mind is full of stress and burdens, and it's hard to pray. My thoughts have been consumed by many things, all that's going on and what may happen and what might not happen. And I tell you, when you get to that point in your life, it's time to seek Jesus a little bit harder. I've had people, so many people, I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to say to God. Some of the best prayers that I think I've ever prayed is when I didn't know what to say. Sometimes we, we make it about things that's not. It's not about what you say, it's about whose presence you're in. Amen. When we approach God with simplicity and a heart, that is overwhelmed by the troubles of this world. God hears more than you know. God hears more than you know. Yes. Amen. We've got a problem going on sometimes, and maybe we do pray about it. You ever worried about whether you even prayed right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I should have prayed for that or not. I don't know if I should pray for this or that. I don't even know if I should pray. I, I don't know if I pray. I don't know, God. I do know this. I'm not saying God is going to do what you want. I'm not saying that. But I'm going to say this. God will always hear your cry. 
He hears everything that you have to say. He knows your troubles, your problems, your burdens. He hears every one of those. When you're a troubled, prayer does not come easy. It does it for me. When you're troubled, prayer can feel awkward and difficult. You feel like, have you ever prayed and, and, and something is not right in you and you know it, but you're praying and you're trying to get there, but you feel like your prayers go about this high? They don't even feel like they're hitting heaven or God's ears. Feel like your, your prayers go about this high. Because there's something wrong inside you need to deal with. There's something wrong. And as a believer, you're trusting in God. You know where your help comes from. But I'm here to tell you, your faith journey is not going to be always easy. It's going to be hard sometimes. There's times, you know, you're like, why do I do what I do? I know God is real, but my relationship just doesn't seem to be where it needs to be. It's nothing to do with God. It's something to do with me. I have lost my focus. I have lost all the... I need to get back what I need to do. I am overwhelmed. I'm burdened. I'm too busy. Whatever it may be. Maybe you just need to simplify your life. Sometimes you're just going to have to cut some things loose and make some hard choices. You know, knowing God and having a relationship with Him is two different things. They are not the same thing. There's a mess of people that I talk to. Oh, I, yeah, they know God. I pray to God. But their life says something different. Knowing who God is and having a relationship with Him is two different things. I remember when I was in second grade. Oh, that's a long time ago. <laughs> when I was in second grade, I had a girlfriend. Yeah, yeah I don't even remember her name. <laughs> I had a girlfriend. We called each other boyfriend and girlfriend. The thing about it is, other than the brief time we were re around each other in school, that was it. And that was good. Because, I mean, after all, I was in second grade. You know, that's all good. But as an adult, that's not good at all. And in a relationship with God, that's not good at all. If you only spend a brief time in God's presence, it's just like when I was a child. This little girl, I might have called her my girlfriend, but you know, other than a brief time around her, that's all there was to it. And as an adult, to have a relationship with another adult, your spouse, you need to spend some time with her. And for a relationship with God, it's the same thing. As an adult, to have a relationship with God, you've got to spend some time with Him. Yes. You know, we, I, you know, the scripture talking about, you know, you, you thought as a child, you acted as a child. You know, you need, as an adult, you need to put those things away. At times, you see couples get divorced, but yet they still live in the same house. Mm -hmm. I've seen that before. That's not a relationship, that's an agreement. <laughs> Many people have family members that they haven't spoken to in years. And that's okay with them. That's not a relationship. That's just acknowledging the other one exists. That's all that is. But in any, in any relationship, communication is a must. So it is with our Heavenly Father. There are many things in this life that are difficult and some that are impossible. Now, I... I was thinking, I said, what is, what is difficult in life? There's a difference between difficult and impossible. Two things that popped in my mind. What are difficult in this life? One is bowling a 300 game. And another one is getting a politician to tell the truth. <laughs> Those are difficult things. Not impossible, but they're difficult. Now, when I thought about the scripture, I said, what is impossible? Because the scripture said all things are possible with God. So I had, to, I had to really do some thinking there. I said, what is impossible in this life? The first thing that I came up with is recapturing words that were spoken. Yep. How many of us, you know, they, they left us. Maybe it was in a, in a moment of anger, or you just wanted to lash out at them for the hurt that they had done to you, whatever. But recapturing words that have been spoken, that's impossible. And something else that's impossible in this life is, you can't escape the presence of God. Mm 
and his love. You may run from him and you may live your life in rebellion. And live your life any kind of way and do all the things that you want to do. But you still can't escape the presence of God and his love. He still pursues us regardless of what we've done and what we do. You know, prayer is between you and God. It's all it's ever been between is you and God. Yes. We make it about many things. In the Lord's Prayer in the book of Matthew chapter 6, Jesus is trying to show us that prayer should be a real part of our world. Mm -hmm. Not just for emergencies. That's right. And prayer is not getting God to come around to your way of thinking. There's many things that I prayed for. They never came to pass. They went completely in the opposite direction. Evidently, what I was praying was not in God's will. Prayer is very misunderstood sometimes. We, what is it about our society? We think we have to fill every moment with words. We just, we just can't seem to be quiet. We, we love to talk. We have to fill every moment with words. It's not always about saying something. Sometimes it's about listening. Mm -hmm. Prayer is about being contemplative and receptive. Mm -hmm. But i got a lot to say to God. You don't understand, Pastor. Think about this. You may have a lot to say to God, but God probably got a lot to say to you as well. Yes. <laughs> So there's a time to talk, and there's a time to listen in any relationship. If you're doing too much of one or the other, you know what? There needs to be a healthy balance. Programs, formulas, and advice, they're never going to replace a good prayer life. None of this stuff. They come up with so many things. Now, as I've thought back through the years, you know, I've, I've taught many different age groups through the years. All the way down to age five. I've never went below that. I, that's a special calling that I don't have. <laughs> Woo, you got to have a special calling to teach two-year-olds. Let me just tell you. Yeah. i, I got to be able to reason with them. I can't reason with a two-year-old. I've never been able to do that. So that's why I don't teach two-year-olds. <laughs> I can't do it. But it's, one of the things, all the different age groups that I have taught, is uh, I've always started out every class with prayer. Now, a lot of the kids thought that was boring. You know, but what I was doing, I was trying to teach them that you need to start things out with prayer. Mm -hmm. Not wait for an emergency to come up. Mm -hmm. After a while, you would get them into it, but then sometimes they'd get antsy. They wanted to, because they knew I had something else planned. They were ready for that. They didn't want to go through this. They're like, you know, they get, you know, they would give me a hard time sometimes and all that. I said, look, guys, if you don't sit still, we do this. We're not doing the other stuff. So you just got to give me a few minutes. And uh, they'd come around. And uh, But sometimes, though, once you got the kids into the prayer, you, you really opened something up there. Because it was amazing what they would ask for prayer for. I'm telling you, I learned more about families than I ever want to know. I'm like, oh my goodness, I bet these mom and dad don't know I know that. <laughs> you know, there's things you don't really want to know. I was like, hmm. You know, I just kind of keep moving on on that one. Yeah. You know, sometimes you don't know what they might say. Yes. Woo! Yeah, I'm telling you. Some of the things I that flash back in my mind, I'm not going to say in here. But yeah, <laughs> kids, I'm telling you. But you've got to, if you don't teach them, how will they ever know? That's why it is important for us to model that. Jesus gave us the ultimate model and the things that he did. But the thing is, sometimes we get it right, sometimes we don't. <coughs> Some days I do real good. Other days, I'm overwhelmed and stressed. It comes sometimes. Yeah. <coughs> it, it just does. Mm -hmm. But when I am in tune with God, when I, when I synchronize my life with God, things change. I'm no longer <coughs> overwhelmed and stressed. That, that doesn't, doesn't mean my situation changed. It may be the same things going on, the same problems, the same people giving me a hard time, whatever it may be. But now, you know what? I have that peace about it. It changes things. God is looking for sincerity in prayer, not manipulation. We want to get God to come around where I think, God, this, this is going to work out great. Sometimes, you know, we, you know, we get feeling special about ourselves and We'll pray this great prayer, you know, we'll use these great big words and we'll just be so proud of ourselves and 
Well, we, well, we, we think we're something sometimes. I bet when God listens to us, when we're trying to manipulate him, I bet he thinks we're something else too. <laughs> Can you imagine? As I close here, I wrote this on my Facebook the other day. Because sometimes we don't know how to pray. You know, we feel like we're struggling. I don't know what to say to God. You can just keep it simple. Sometimes we think we have to do this and that. There's times that I'm at a loss for words. And I don't know what to say to God. Maybe I'm burdened and stressed by many things in this world. The simple prayer that I, that I wrote up is this. I put it on Facebook. God, thank you for being God. And I'm not. Yes. If what I want is not what I need, help me to see that. You know, God is looking for sim simplicity and sincerity. Yes. Not big fancy words and manipulation yeah. or any yeah. of that. He wants your heart. He wants to see the very heart of you with every head bowed and every eye closed. Maybe you're here today and you're not saved. Today can be your day of salvation. There's no shame in that. Everyone has to have a day of salvation. No one is good enough just to get to heaven. You've got to have that day of salvation. Today can be yours.